this evening, I'm going to um, give you some information, and I think we'll have a little bit of time for a couple of questions, which I hope you will uh, help answer. And um, let me begin this session with a reminder. We've got a little few slides will pop up along the way here. We'll get started with our first one that's just a reminder to uh, those watching uh, that they can sign up for the little e-newsletter if they have an interest, Discerning the Times. Information's there on the screen. And it's, you know, there's a lot going on in our world. I don't know. I would imagine you folks pay attention to uh, things. I, I know one, one of the goals that I have in, in this, uh, this segment is just to encourage you to be discerning. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of issues that God's people need to be, you know, need to exercise good discernment. I'm not just talking about things that are connected to government and politics. I'm talking about our walk with the Lord. We need to discern certain things and uh, follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. If you don't follow the Holy Spirit in your personal walk, uh, there's a lot of unnecessary trouble problems that come and as far as um, your victory and your walk with the Lord it's not going to be there you cannot grieve the Holy Spirit and walk in victory at the same time I'm not saying you're not saved but I'm telling you you're not going to be happy you're going to be miserable and uh, if I read my Bible right uh, you really need to listen to the Lord you need to discern discern his will and walk in it and, you know, the Lord is very patient with this, but along the way, church, he understands. You see, the Lord knows when we know better. Now, are you with me? The Lord knows when we know better. And he has an expectation. So uh, there's a lot of territory covered with the idea of discernment. Certainly, we need to discern the times, and uh, hopefully we can discern important matters related to the will of God for our lives. Tonight, I want to give you a little uh, feedback with an article entitled Christians Strike Back. I want to talk to that issue here. And then there's a passage of scripture that we're going to finish with, which I think you'll find helpful. So let's pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us in fellowship here this evening. We pray now that you'll bless our time together. Uh, as a group, and then, Lord, those joining us by way of television, whenever and wherever they might be watching, we pray that you will quicken this word to the hearts of your people. And, Lord, as only you can, speak through your word, speak into the lives of many that need to hear your voice, Lord, who need salvation, who need, Lord, restoration. They need a touch from you. I pray that you'll speak to many. Prosper your word in the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. All right. Um, this article is, I found interesting. I just want to take a couple minutes. It might take maybe five minutes or so to get this information to you. And then as you pick up on the, what's being discussed here, uh, I think um, uh, there's an important matter for Christians to discern. And I hope we can discern things properly. Here we go. Um, a very significant court challenge in the state of Indiana is starting to get more national attention, and that will likely only increase once the hearing officially uh, takes place. You can go to the next slide there, Richard. Um, for years, Christian uh, business owners have faced withering assaults on their rights of conscience by the LGBT political lobby and their pawns in both state legislatures and city councils around the country. Passing Orwellian named non-discrimination or human rights statutes, activists empower the government to put a gun to the head of business owners, forcing them to participate in otherwise voluntary ceremonies, even when it constitutes a violation of their religious conscience. Quoting again, while Christian ministers have largely had their rights of conscience respected and protected to this point, Christian florists, bakers, musicians, and photographers have not been so fortunate. And I know a lot of you know these stories in the news. Continuing again, but in Indiana, a group of pro-family Christians decided to push back 
appealing to Article I, Section 3 of the Indiana State Constitution that says, quote, no law shall, in any case, whatever, control the free exercise and enjoyment of religious opinions or interfere with the rights of conscience, unquote. Now, that's in their state constitution. Continuing, the Indiana Family Institute and the American Family Association of Indiana have filed suit against several cities and municipalities there, as well as against the state legislature for their so-called human rights laws that blatantly offend this constitutional provision by actually punishing people for not believing the way the LGBT movement says they should believe. After steamrolling believers for a decade, this retaliatory legal strategy is likely not what the left-wing activist city councils anticipated, and to this point they have been roundly defeated in their efforts to get courts to dismiss the Christian's case. That's bad news for the neo-fascism of the LGBT agenda because their defeat is almost guaranteed if the hearing doesn't take place in front of activist judges. The rights of conscience were among the most cherished, the most fiercely protected, and the most articulately defended by the founding fathers. Harnessing the power of government to compel people into an activity that offends their conscience is fascist and completely at odds with any rational understanding of American civil liberties. So writes the author here, quoting again, this is a shrewd and clever way forward for Christians. Most every other state has some form of a conscience rights provision like Indiana's. And even those that don't still operate under the authority of the First Amendment to our, the nation's constitution. Activist city councils and state lawmakers who are preoccupied with committing ill-advised, unconstitutional infringements on peaceful, law-abiding, religious business people have to know there will be consequences. It should be made very clear to lawmakers that attacking the conscience rights of citizens will be met with litigation, high cost to the city or state, and a public relations nightmare for those arrogant enough to pretend it is their duty to punish the thoughts and beliefs of people who don't think and believe like them. Uh, this article written by Peter Heck, and uh, he's a speaker, author, and teacher who hosts a weekly radio broadcast on WIBC 93.1 FM in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, this column was or originally on his website and appeared uh, republished by One News Now. Now, I trust that you guys have some uh, understanding of the issue at hand here. The uh, LGBT community, uh, lesbians, uh, gays, bisexuals, transgenders. All right, these are citizens of the United States of America some of our neighbors are such, and they're caught up in a movement. They have things on their mind. Okay, well, we're going to all have to live together. And we're going to love, as far as Christians are concerned, we're going to love people. I just got to tell you something. I don't care what kind of sin you're in. I love you. Now, is it fair enough for me to say that you that are Christians here in this service, and those of you watching that are Christians, don't you love other people? Now, we might not appreciate all their behavior, okay, but we love people. And uh, we understand the Lord Jesus loves every man, woman, boy, and girl. He has died for all of our sins. All right, we know this. Now, the Spirit of Christ compels us to love one another and to love our neighbor. And that's not qualified, uh, you know, love those neighbors that aren't real, real, real bad sinners. Is that the way that works? It doesn't work that way. It's love your neighbor as yourself. And who's to say who's a real, real bad sinner? Uh, some people that look real good on the outside, and you wouldn't know it, but they're, they're like the Pharisees, man. Uh, their hearts are wicked, 
and uh, they're murderers at heart. You can't just judge everything by what you see on the outside. So we, we understand that. But now here we are in a greater society. We're, we're in America. We're in a nation. We're in a community here, Erie County or wherever you might be watching this broadcast. And we have folks in our community. We're all trying to live out our lives and we're, we want civil order and authority. And, and, then, and then we want something that's really precious to all of us, and that's called freedom of conscience, which says that you might not want to be a Christian. Now, I wish you did, because if you die without Christ, you're going to be lost. But you have to be free to choose. We cannot make you be a Christian. We don't want to attempt to make you a Christian. We can't make you be a Christian. Am I teaching it right? You cannot make it. i tell you what we can do. We can compel you to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can give your heart to Christ and you can return his love to him. See, he loved us first and he gave himself for us. And when we understand the love of God in Christ Jesus and we recognize our need for the Savior, we can return that love. We can love him back and say, yes, Lord, I will confess you as my Lord and Savior. I will give you my heart, all of my heart. Just like we were singing a moment ago. So, but that's a matter of conscience. This is what freedom of religion is all about. In America, you're free to worship per your conscience. Now, if you're an atheist, I don't want you to be an atheist, but you're free to be one. But the moment you cross the line and you tell me that I don't have the freedom of conscience to say that you're wrong, now you're the one who's trying to put me in slavery. See, I'll give you the freedom. Look, if you don't worship that old dead oak tree out in the front yard, you can, you can go worship that if you want to. I don't think that's a good thing to do. But, but you're free. When I disagree with you and I say, no, you ought not worship that old dead oak tree. You need to worship the true and living God. I have a conscience. And you've got to let me be free. When I, when I respect the Ten Commandments, I fear God. I'm led by His Spirit. You're led by His Spirit if you're a believer. Judicially, I don't have any relationship to the law, and that's why we're justified as believers. We're dead to the law by the body of Christ. So there's a sense in which I have no relationship to the law. But in as much as I follow the Spirit of Christ, he leads me into the righteousness of the law. I'm a servant of righteousness. I respect those Ten Commandments. The Lord says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, that, that moral standard uh, is encompassing. Yeah, that is a condemnation of any sexual behavior outside the bonds of holy matrimony between a man and a woman. And that would condemn so-called same-sex marriage and any other perversion of sexuality. You say, well, I don't like you saying that. Okay, now we're back to square one. I have a conscience. I fear God. You have an obligation to respect my freedom of conscience. That's what this whole country was founded upon, more or less. Religious freedom has always been the cornerstone of American freedom. Now, if you're ignorant of that, that's, that's your problem. You, you just go ahead and read up on history a bit. I'm not telling you, I'm, we're not inventing something new here in 2017. This is as old as America is. The cornerstone of American freedom is religious freedom. Always has been. Freedom of conscience. Now, you see these Christians in Indiana, and this is something that in different in areas of the country, Christians have been pushing back. Christians pushing back? Now, I got a question for you. Can you discern between taking an evil and suffering persecution as compared to exercising rights and privileges afforded to you as a citizen? In other words, you know, Jesus said, if you're persecuted, you should take that. You're persecuted for righteousness sake. Uh, rejoice. Your reward's great in heaven. Okay. When we... Let me ask you this. When we stand up for our rights, whether it be in America or any other nation, and we struggle to establish or maintain religious freedom, are we simply trying to avoid persecution? And is it wrong to try to avoid persecution? How would you discern that? 
Is it right for Christians to go to court and fight for religious freedom? Somebody comment on that. Who's bringing it against me? I mean, we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. If, uh, if we don't let them know what the truth is, who is? I mean, God give us a duty to do, and that's to be a spokesman for Him. And I think we ought to feel free to stand up and go for it, for what God goes for. Okay, so now, if I'm hearing Brother Harold right, he's saying, more or less, uh, I heard you say this in so many words. When the government is abusing its power, the Lord hasn't given them the privilege to do that. So in a context, in this greater context, we might be suffering persecution, but it's not out of place for Christians to address their government and seek relief and even establish a society where you can be totally free, have freedom of conscience, worship. But if the government is abusing you and even being tyrannical, imposing things that cause you to sin against your conscience, that government's out of order. Is that what I'm hearing you say? As far as the government is concerned, we're out of trouble. But if we stand up for what God told us to stand up for, then we may get persecuted. But stand up for what God says is right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So while in a society like America... Uh, which we have a large measure of freedom, but we might suffer persecution for righteousness sake. But while we're enduring persecution, we can simultaneously work to eliminate the persecution. Is that okay to say it that way? Am I discerning this right? So it's not out of place for Christians to use the rights afforded them by their own government to pursue relief when they are being oppressed